Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1979 sports drama comedy, North Dallas 40. Now, to me personally, this is a genuine gem. I think it's really underrated. It does not get talked about enough when it comes to sports movies or football films. And I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to uh, give my thoughts on the film. I've been curious about this film for many, many years because I am a fan of the Dallas Cowboys and this film is somewhat connected to uh, the team with uh, the book that it, the movie is based on, North Dallas 40 by Pete Gent. Being a semi-fictionalized account of Pete Gent's time with the Dallas Cowboys from the mid to late 60s. And so North Dallas 40, the film, it takes the book and takes a lot of the sensationalized craziness from the book, as well as the hard hitting rawness of it and puts it all together and creates one of the most authentic and one of the most poignant and compelling football movies out there. It's directed by Ted Kotcheff who uh, you might recognize as the guy behind First Blood, Uncommon Valor, as well as Weekend at Bernie's. And I thought he did a tremendous and absolutely terrific job directing this movie in terms of just capturing the just raw nature of uh, this film. It's a very gritty, very raw, very hard-hitting movie from the opening scene alone, just showcasing Nick Nolte's character, uh, Elliot, in bed, disheveled, broken down, beaten, to the point where he's pulling out a, a tissue paper that's covered in blood out of his nose uh, as he's groggily waking up for the day. And... Just the way that a lot of the football scenes were shot was something that was way ahead of its time. There's a particular sequence near the end of the movie where you actually get a POV shot of the quarterback as he's being um, harassed by one of the members of the uh, opposing team's defensive line. And that's something that you didn't really see a whole lot of back in uh, this particular time period. It's something that be has become pretty stock, pretty standard when it comes to football movies now. But back then, that was not something you saw a lot of. And and so much of the film, what little football uh, footage there is in terms of uh, the, the scenes featuring the uh, North Dallas Bulls playing football, it was shot in a very realistic fashion. And... Kotchiff also did a good job capturing all the different personalities of the cast, really uh, maintaining a consistent tone throughout the movie, visually, as well as uh, with the performances from, uh, from everyone involved. And overall, yeah, I think it's a really well-directed film. There's even some nice-looking shots uh, when it comes to establishing shots or, or shots that really set a right mood or create the, the right setting or really put you uh, in the the uh, shoes of uh, of a football player or right in the middle of the action when it comes to a football game or in the action when it comes to the moments leading up to a football game in the locker room or uh, when it comes to the scenes involving uh, the players when they are uh, in a meeting or uh, dealing with uh, the the coach or the uh, the coaching staff writing them or uh, getting on their case or trying to give them the next lecture or the next moment of inspiration that turns out to be just a total pathetic just joke. And even the even the smaller moments where the players are just spending time with one another, just shooting the shit. It's just a really well shot film for what it is. And the script by Peter Gent, uh, Ted Kotcheff, and Frank Yablons is terrific. It's a really great screenplay. It 
really does a great job balancing the absurdity of the different uh, members of the team and the different things that they get involved with when it comes to their partying and the other shenanigans uh, that they um, take part in when they're not on the football field, as well as some really poignant human drama where you have these players and you realize that they have become codependent on the sport of football, that despite all the damage that it's doing to their bodies, they are willing to push themselves further for the game and for the love of the game. And North Dallas 40 in this script to me is the best example of a screenplay that really captures that spirit. It captures why football players do what they do, why they go out there and they continue to play this violent sport and get hit and get smacked around and break bones and take painkillers in order to keep playing and get shots in their knees and do all this stuff just for the love of the game and to just feel that thrill, the thrill that comes with winning, the thrill that comes with making a big play and and getting recognized for that, uh, not only by the national audience, but also by their peers. And there's a certain validation that comes with that that they can't really get from anything else. And so you really do get to see this give and take sort of relationship with football players and the game of football. And you see it through the lens of Peter Gent's doppelganger or his, uh, his fictional character in Phil Elliott, who is intended to be a representation of himself and what he went through during his time in the NFL. And yeah, th- this is this film does not shy away. It 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 really shows the gritty details of the sport. It shows all of the different highs as well as the lows, and it does. It shows the toll that it takes on a player's body. It shows the strain that the game can have on a relationship. Uh, Because there's a romance that starts to uh, form between Elliot and this this other character in Charlotte Calder. And I think the script did a good job really showcasing the two of them. Showcasing uh, these two and how their relationship initially forms and how it strengthens as it goes on. And how there's some cracks that uh, start to form because Charlotte doesn't understand why he keeps doing this to his body and she doesn't get it. But then over time she understands, but Phil himself goes through a journey of self-realization where he realizes that at a certain point he can't take it anymore and it's not worth what he puts his body through for the small satisfaction that he gets from playing the game because he's up there in age he's having to take shots in his knee with big giant needles in order to play he's seeing how the coaches and how these other people around him are using his teammates and other players on the field as pawns and how they don't care about them Because Delmar, a teammate of his who's had all these injuries, he doesn't want to take a shot because he's afraid that he'll hurt himself worse because he can't feel anything if he plays with the drugs and he decides to play with the drugs and he winds up living his worst nightmare. And he hurts himself really bad. And not only that, He gets hit in the face so hard that it busts his face wide open. 
And this all just forces Phil to realize there's more to life than football. And he just starts to really come to the realization that it's time. It's time for him to quit. And there's some really great lines of dialogue that deal with this. And honestly, some of Nick Nolte's best acting is from this scene to me where Phil, he's asked to go to the office of the, the team's owner and they have this DA. It's not really a DA. They have this private detective. They have this uh, private detective guy who was tailing him and was monitoring his, his activities when he's not playing football and he's in trouble and they're pretty much about ready to suspend him. And his head coach has been riding him and has been on his ass the entire season. And he's on the owner's side and he's talking about how Phil was selfish when it comes to what he did and he should have known better and he hurt the team and and this is uh this is um Phil's reaction. <clears throat> team Oh Christ's sake, BA We're not the team They're the team These guys right here, BA, they're the team We're the equipment We're the jock straps the helmets They just depreciate us and take us off the goddamn tax returns that's what it is. Yeah. Well, but I was good when I played. Because the only thing that's real in that game is me. And that's enough. And I thought that was a great moment for Nick Nolte and for Phil. And his boss essentially fires him suspends him for conduct detrimental to the league or to the team and he's just like fuck it i quit and he tells his coach you know you were right it's time to put away childish things and he grows up he matures and i thought that was a really poignant moment and there was a the script just did a really good job building up to that scene and there's other great stuff too there's just really funny uh, lines of dialogue, fun back and forth moments between um, characters, in particular Seth Maxwell, the quarterback, and Phil. Like they have some really hilarious banter with one another. There's a whole scene which which ties into the tagline of the movie, which is "Wait until you see the weird part," and it's really funny. And so you have. This moment between Maxwell and and Phil and Maxwell's telling this crazy story during one of these parties that he had and he's all like Drake now he takes out a bunch of them fake dicks oh Max that's gross it's not gross shit gross is when you go in and kiss your grandpa good night and he sticks his tongue down your throat that's gross anyway He's got one man that is about eight inches long and it's it's pink and it's got little crinkets in it and it's got a grinder that you turn like this and it goes in and out. Look, I don't want to hear any of this. I don't want to hear no more of this. Wait, man, I'm just getting to the weird part. The weird part? The weird part? Yeah. It gets weird. <laughs> like, I just thought that was really funny. And so there's a lot of just fun moments with these characters and these these players as they're just chatting with one another. There's some moments of dialogue in the script, I have to admit, have not aged well, similar to Slapshot, some low blow uh, slurs, but they're kept to mostly a minimum there are some moments where you have some of these football players getting away with activities and things like that that would not fly today, that definitely would be considered to be something like sexual harassment. But the script does have moments where it's like, hey, this shit isn't okay. There are limits to it. And 
you do have cer- certain moments where like Phil tries to put a stop to it or something. So it's not like it really is considered to be just totally acceptable and a okay. So there are morals here and there is some sort of moral ground, even though it's a little, it's definitely more shaky than, you know, you might see in other stories or in other films, but that's the whole point of the movie. It's just to show, uh, a fairly realistic account of all the different personalities involved in a football team and how everything comes together. And I really like the fact that in the script as well, it doesn't have this predictable nature to it in terms of the games and who wins and who loses. Uh, there's even honestly a bit of um, a really eerie moment at the end where a, the one of the members of the North Dallas Bulls, I think it's one of the one of the kicking team members, drops the snap, and they lose the game, and they're not able to take the game to overtime be, or win the game eventually because a Dallas player dropped the snap, which, as a Cowboys fan, seeing that Tony Romo actually dropped a snap in a playoff game against the Seahawks in real life is triggering and at the same time really eerie because you're like wow (laughs) that looked familiar and then you're like damn was this just was this just did this movie just curse the cowboys or something (laughs) years ago back in 1979 it was just predetermined fate that Romo would drop the snap in the in similar fashion to the to, to the um, snap holder in North Dallas Forty, um, and I also like the fact that you know what the film is not afraid to be dirty when it comes to dialogue or actions of certain players, like they're popping pills, like it's no tomorrow, or when it comes to doing things on the field because sometimes you got to get an extra advantage and sometimes that involves playing dirty and they do that with this one defensive tackle who was just dominating the offensive line and they do a chop block and take him out and that's an unsightly and unsavory part of the game but especially back in this particular era it was a very commonly utilized one and yeah there's just really just hard-hitting dialogue that tells it like it is like there's a scene where one of the coaches is telling one of the players you need to know the difference between pain and injury and that's something that still exists today in the nfl in modern football where you'll have coaches being like you're not injured you're just hurt suck it up take some painkillers shoot up some Toradol, and go back out there. If it's not bad enough for you to go on IR, and you can still play through it and help the team, you do it. So it's still something that is still very prevalent today in the modern NFL. So yeah, just a really good script. I loved this script. Other than some of the moments where, you know, it's a little unsavory, a little too unsavory in terms of, some of the dialogue and some of the attempts at humor. But other than that, like I thought it had some really clever, uh, witty lines of dialogue and some nice moments for various different members of the team, uh, including that one moment where one of the offensive linemen is finally able to vent at the, def- the, 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 the coordinator. He's finally able to vent at one of the coaches, uh, John Matsuak's character, Shadak. He's finally able to just tear right into his coach and just tell him what's for and just grill him and just let a bunch of shit off his chest about how he just wants to play the game and, and have fun. And all you're doing is telling me about these fucking tendencies all the time. And you know what? I, I, I just want to go out there and play the game that I love. And I want you to validate me for just wanting to do that. And I'm pretty sure for a lot of players who have played the game of football, that resonates with them as well. 
So, yeah, really, really great script. Good, good character depth as well with these characters, especially uh, Phil Elliott's and uh, the quarterback uh, uh, Seth Maxwell, and even said the stuff with the owner and and what's going on with him, Conrad Hunter and his son Emmett, and even the stuff with the head coach, uh, uh, B. A. Struther, who was definitely a mirror for Tom Landry, and how he's trying to get all of his players to be on the straight and narrow path, and 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 do what's best for the team, but ignore other parts of coaching, and and not really be able, not really being able to move past his own rigid guidelines even if it even if it means keeping his team together and getting them to uh genuinely like playing the game of football and see it more than just something that they have to do in order to appease their coach um and it also talks about how he's installing the computer and getting the computer involved and how the computer is never wrong. And that's an interesting dichotomy as well. And especially around this time period when computers were kind of just starting to come up and starting to become more, more commonplace and they, they were being introduced more into sports and, and other areas. Um, so yeah, uh, I, yeah, I cannot sing enough praises for this script. Uh, I feel the same way about the cast. It's a, I think it's a really solid cast. Uh, I think everyone does their jobs really well. I think it, it's a really good cast when it comes to just showcasing all the different strengths and sometimes weaknesses of these characters, really bringing them to life and making them feel real and 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 just making everything feel even more authentic from Nick Nolte. It's Phil Elliott, the broken down wide receiver. Who's got these great hands and one of the, some of the best hands in the business and has a good uh, rapport with the quarterback who's also aging and, and on and potentially on his last legs in um, Seth Maxwell, who was based on Don Meredith, who at the time, in Dallas was also on his way out and, you know, was, was, you know, one of those guys that wasn't necessarily 100% on the straight and narrow or really what Landry wanted out of a, uh, out of, out of the leader of his team. And you have all that, and him being like more of a celebrity and all this sort of stuff and doing the parties and so on and so forth and being more of a freewheeling and dealing kind of guy. But I, Mac Davis is, is an underrated actor anyway. And I really do feel that this is definitely one of his best roles. It's just very charismatic and you just love watching him play this character uh, with his sovereign drawl and just, 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 just everything about this guy was just this character was just fun to watch. Uh, and him and Nick Nolte had just really great chemistry. And GD Spradlin was was also really good as the as the no nonsense, uh, rigid coach, BA Struther, uh, who wants you to do everything for the good of the team, even that me even if that means sacrificing your own personality. Uh Dale Haddon as Charlotte Calder. Not necessarily the strongest performance overall, but I thought it was decent enough because I think she had some adequate enough chemistry with Nick Nolte. Uh, there were some scenes between the two of them that were actually kind of charming. Bo Sensen, he plays Joe Bob Pretty, one of the offensive linemen, and it was really unique to see Bo and John Masuak play offensive linemen and not defensive line uh, players. I thought that was interesting. I, I, I was surprised that guys that size and build were cast more as, as offensive linemen in this film instead of uh, DL. 
Uh, but it worked. Uh, I, and I really felt John and Bo, they were just a great tandem. Uh, and Bo was down. He was insane. Crazy wild man character. He made John Matsuak who actually played football and was known. It was notorious for being just insane in the membrane. He made him look sane in comparison. That's how crazy and off the rails Bo Sensen was as Joe Bob. Um, then he had a few other people, you know, like Marshall Colt, who played a character named Art. Character named Art. Steve Forrest played the, the, the owner, Conrad Hunter. Uh, Dabney Coleman had an... A uh, pretty early role here in this is Emmett Hunter, and you could just see, you could just see little inklings or or uh, previews of things to come when it comes to Dabney Coleman and his career uh, after this film and and movies like Nine to Five and so on and so forth and TV shows because he's such a sniveling bastard of a character. Like he was only on the screen for a little bit, but man, did you hate him! Man, did you want to wring his neck? And that just that just means he did a great job playing the role because that was the whole point of that character. Charles Durning was also uh, uh, fun as Coach Johnson. Uh, this he was like the assistant coach, and he thinks he's saying these poignant things and these he's th he thinks that he's really clever and really smart, but he's actually kind of a dunce at times and isn't able to read the room. And that leads to some really funny scenes and some really, uh, uh, chuckle worthy moments with the rest of the team. And then you also had Savannah Smith Boucher. You play Joanne Rodney, who honestly her chemistry with Nick Nolte was even more consistent than Charlotte Calder. The, the actor who played Charlotte Dale. So I, I honestly think you could have just swapped the two. Because I think Joanne, Rod you know, Joanne Rodney, the character that Savannah Smith Boucher played, it just seemed like something that was just a better fit. And I think Phil, at one point, he had dated her, and she was like an ex of his. But you could just switch the the actresses, and I, and I definitely think that would have benefited the film. Um, the film also features some relatively nice looking cinematography by Paul Lohman for the kind of film that this is. The editing by Jay Kamen I thought was excellent, especially when it comes to the football scenes and the various different sequences involving, you know, training or 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 in camp or practice or even in the facility or even the scenes where they're just uh, you know working out. And the music is by John Scott, and I really like this score. I thought the score fit the film very well. Um, just, just as well as the laces on a football, uh, really captured a lot of, uh, the spirit that the film was going for, uh, really added a lot of extra weight to some of the dr more dramatic scenes and yeah, it's like 119 minutes, but it goes by at a really quick pace. I never really felt it to be that dull or that tedious or that boring. Um, yeah, uh, I honestly highly recommend the film I, I really do i think this film deserves uh, a lot more recognition uh if you enjoy sports movies especially if you like football films uh definitely check this out um to me it, it's it's a touchdown it really is and no pun intended i, I really do feel that way about this movie but anyway, thanks for watching uh, my review of North Dallas 40. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.